racking. So yeah, we started a Rotomel on February 25th, 2020. Today is May 7th, 2020, by the way. This, this Rotomel was three pounds of honey, a half ounce of rose petals, a smidge of chocolate mint. Define a smidge, but anyway, it was a few pieces of chocolate mint. Some fresh lime leaves. More on that in a second. Half a pack of Lalvin 71B yeast and water to a gallon. The OG was 1.116. We, um, we removed the, uh, the leaves really quickly. We found out that those kefir lime leaves were just way too much. Um, back on March 26th, we took a reading and we added more rose petals. It was at 1.028. So also on 4.1 is when we, April 1st, we took out all that stuff. We took out the rose petals that were added and we took out the extra kefir lime leaves and we added back a half ounce of rose petals. So that's, so that's what you see floating in here right now. This thing has been crazy, but it looks like it has a really nice color now. I believe the lime leaves were only in for a little while, so it shouldn't be too, too bad as far as flavor. It's just one of those, you're going to hear about this for a couple months now, folks. Yeah, we're not... We used them in a few, bu we're few not, brews, we're not going to do it again. They just, they add an odd gingerish-like flavor to things, and we thought they were great because, you know, we got these lime trees growing, it's citrus, and yeah, take my advice, don't use them, just walk away. If you want a citrusino, zest of the lime or the juice oh, yeah. of the lime is perfectly fine. Don't use the leaves. Don't, don't, don't just don't. All right, so gonna take a reading, and if you're wondering why we're taking a reading, it's to make sure that this is really done. See where it's at, all that good stuff. Then we're gonna do a little taste test and see what we think of it. Okay, so this did actually go down a little bit since the last time we saw it. It's at 1022 now from 1028. Being that that was March 26th and this is May 7th, I'm going to go with it's done. It, it only dropped, you know, six points in seven weeks. It's done. But we're only putting this into conditioning phase. It's not actually going into a bottle yet, so there's no danger at this point. I do need a little glass, though. And what I want to do is just pour off a little tiny bit, give this a taste. One thing I said when we were uh, taking the reading is this looks a lot like our Fay wine. Um, and I think that a lot of the color of our Fay wine is actually coming from the rose petals that we put in. So that would actually make a lot of sense. Um, all right, so first, it's like maybe a five to a six on the clarity scale. It's got some floaties in there. I'm just gonna... It's just rose petals. <laughs> yeah, it's just a rose petal floating around in there. And we're drinking this, so whatever. Um, but anyway, I can smell the kefir lime. I'm hoping it didn't ruin the flavor too much. It tastes a lot better than the last time. The kefir lime is a, a strong flavor. But I do smell rose now. I do yep. distinctly smell rose where before I wasn't I getting I taste rose. the honey. I taste the rose. I would say if this had 30% less lime flavor, this would be really, really interesting and good. Yeah. Right now, it's okay. It's not my favorite thing ever, but it's okay. I would like to see what this does in conditioning. I want to see if it improves. And I think this goes back to the balance theory with tannins and acids. Oh, yeah. I feel this is too strong on both the tannin and the acid end. So, therefore, those angle notes, if you watch the tannin and acid brew talk, are competing with each other. And drowning out the round notes. I'm gonna start the racking while she's. Whereas this. if this was less acidic, I think this would be beautiful. It's not bad as it is. I want to be clear on that. I'm. If you made this along with us and used anything but kefir lime leaves, you're probably loving it right about now. Had we used say the lime zest, as she said, or even lime juice, I think this would have been much much better. Um, it's not bad though. That's yeah. the thing. I was actually expecting to not like this because we didn't appreciate it last time. There's going to be a ton of lease from this simply because there's just no avoiding it. All those rose petals, there's just no avoiding it. That's why I'm putting this into a plastic pitcher first so that we can kind of pick out some of those rose petals before it goes into the container. Now I want to point something out too. We're using a three liter bottle to 
put this into secondary. This is a US gallon or 3.75 liters. This is three liters. So I'm hoping we can get it close to the top and not have to worry about too much headspace. So don't worry if it's a little sloppy with lease. I'm not concerned. I want to get as much fluid out as we can. By the way, in case I didn't mention it before, that puts this to about 14% ABV. So this is a fairly high, It's and that's the other reason why I believe it's done. It's right at the yeast tolerance of the yeast, so it's good. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not uh, super dry. I think the flowery notes make it feel sweeter than it really is. And uh, here we go. Instead of just putting this into turbos because I have all that gunk on there. I'm actually going to take this over to the sink, rinse it out first, then sanitize it. A word about the lease here too. As much as I believe that this is a great colony of yeast, awesome uh, content for the you know nutrient content in here, it's got the taint of the uh, kefir, lime. kefir lime. So we won't be using this lease. It's going in the compost. What I want to point out too is the amount here. This bottle is 785 milliliters less than a gallon, okay? So this, right up to this point here, is about a gallon. So I'm thinking we might be pretty close to just to just filling this. I want it up close to the neck. That way we have less chance for oxygenation. Oxidation, oxygenation, yeah, all those things. The reason I'm holding this in my lap is, first, we're too lazy to grab a, bo a box to put this on. We just make this easy. All you need to do is have this higher, the starting vessel higher than the finishing vessel, and that's it. Just to show you guys the color of this, check that out. I mean, I, I'm just moving this around a little bit. Look at how red, and it's like a this vibrant pinkish red. Really amazing color. Um, that's just like really, really cool, I think. But anyway, um, they don't call me the volumizer for nothing. Look at that, right up to there, you know? And uh, what I'm going to do is just stick an airlock and a stopper back in this. And why am I putting it back under airlock? Some people have asked. Um, it's because this is probably still off-gassing a little bit. We want to get those gases out. And if there is any minor residual fermentation that's going to happen, I'd rather it be under airlock than with a closed stopper because then it could explode. It could pop the stopper and then bad things can happen. We did eliminate as much oxygen surface as possible, so I feel this is going to be a very safe secondary or conditioning phase. This will go under my desk for, geez, I don't know, month, two months, six months, a year? Not sure. Till it's done. Till we get to the point where we're <laughs> ready to do it. How's that? Um, a lot of people have been asking lately, like, where's this fault to this? Where's the fault to this? And we're taking longer with these, not to, not, not to irritate people, but because we feel that they need the time. Okay, we have other brews that we've checked on that aren't ready to show you a video. I mean, you don't really want to see a 30 second video of me going, oh, not done yet. You know, instead we'd like to show that at the beginning of the next video that, okay, it wasn't done yet. Wait two weeks, now it's done. We'd rather show it that way. But uh, anyway, like I said, this is going to go back for a while and you'll see it then. But in the meantime, thanks for watching guys and have a great day. Bye-bye.